if you are new here and for today's video we have a very special video because I don't know if a lot of you remember but very many years ago I got a P.O. Box package sent my one and only P.O. Box package sent to me from a subscriber their name was Brendan if you've seen any of my recent videos I have been hanging out a lot with someone named Brendan who happens to be the person that sent me the P.O. Box package in 2022 2021 and I thought for today's video we could showcase his Funko Pop collection you can kind of see it behind me a little bit but we're gonna do like a more in-depth collection because he has the best Funko Pop collection I've ever seen and super creative so I thought today you could meet him and see his Funko Pop collection so this is gonna be a little showcasing my subscribers Funko Pop collection but also a very special subscriber because we've become like super close friends like besties so it's kind of like a full circle moment so I hope you all enjoy watching this video and yeah roll the title card so I first thought I could introduce you all to Brendan you've seen him in a couple other videos as I said before but this is like a proper introduction so you want to tell the class a little about yourself uh, my name is Brendan. I've lived in Florida pretty much my whole life. I've been a Disney fan for forever. Never an annual pass holder, but I went to the parks growing up as a child and then took a long break off. I started collecting Funkos back in like 2019, and I only did like a handful of purchases, but then I went really heavy into it after the COVID lockdowns. And uh, as you can see behind me, I collected fast, got a little bit overwhelmed. I'd say I have probably like close to 400 Funko Pops, majority being Disney and Pixar. You're the first Funko video of the new age of the Nelmsy Productions. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Uh, Speaking to the mic. <laughs> pretty good. Why? Uh, it's about time. Anything else you'd like to say? I'm grateful to be here. Grateful for all my fans to finally be able to show them what I've been hoarding for the past uh, <laughs> four years. Get the show rolling. Favorite Funko Pop and do you keep the boxes? Uh, I keep the boxes, but most of my stuff is displayed out of box, and so I bought a lot cheaper for out of box, and then probably the Splash Mountain ride is my favorite pop. And without further ado, here is... Brendan. Displaying his Funko Pop collection. <laughs> So whenever I was coming up with the idea for displaying my pops, I decided that I wanted to do the four Walt Disney World parks. Start off with the main park being Magic Kingdom. And so I have Cinderella's Castle. I have the Cinderella Amazon exclusive, I believe. It's a metallic. I have the newer Walt with Dumbo and Timothy, the Hot Topic Diamond Tinkerbell. And then I have my name tag for when I work. <laughs> Flame Tree, Barbecue and Animal Kingdom. And I got these little tree type things from Goodwill. You'll see a lot of my displays thrifted. I think they turned out well. And then I have my 50th anniversary of Magic Kingdom Disney Band. I think when everyone thinks of Disney, they probably think of the princesses. I had an opportunity to buy on Mercari. Each one of these princesses that you'll see, they're like bedazzled kind of for $20 each. I have Cinderella, Snow White, Pocahontas, Belle, Lon, Ariel, Jasmine, Merida, Tiana, Rapunzel, Moana, and then Jasmine again. Above them I have each of their sidekicks respectively with Gus, Dopey, Flick, and Miko, Chip. Uh, uh, <laughs> and... Brendan, that is the best Disney sidekick of all time. Genie, uh, Genie. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why I'm, I, this is sick for a while. Oh, uh, we got <laughs> Flounder, Roger, <laughs> Baloo, Louie, and Maximus. Did I, did I miss anyone? Uh, yeah, you did. Who did I miss? Mushu. Oh, Mushu, Mushu, that's right. Um, we got Mushu. <laughs> After I got the Bedazzle Princesses, Funko released the Gold Ultimate Princess, and I thought that those would pair really well with the Bedazzled, more colorful ones. So I got almost all the ones for those. I'm missing like Cinderella, Elsa, and I think one other one, but I actually thought the blue Cinderella looked better. And these all actually come with pins, which uh, Emily and I started collecting, so... That's a good investment, got two for one. And then above that, we have the train sets. I have the villain connecting to the Casey Jr. train. Pretty much all of these ones were Funko exclusive. And then this one was Amazon, Funko, Funko, Amazon, Funko, Amazon, with these three being a bit rarer. Now we're entering into the actual like structured parts of Magic Kingdom, and we start off with Main Street when you enter into the park. So we have Emily and I, we actually made these together at Funko Hollywood, coming up on a year ago for her birthday. And so we got her with like a little vlogger camera and me with a little shopping bag, since people do a lot of their shopping on Main Street. We have Lilo getting a photo of Stitch, since people like doing their photos there. Penelope and Ralph getting some bakeries. Along 
along with Goofy. And then since children like buying their balloons on Main Street, I have Carl, Winnie the Pooh with their balloons. I have Rainbow Unicorn and uh, Ron Swanson, I believe his name is, from Park and Rec for Starbucks. And then I think it's like Von Wiener from like Plastic Plastic and the Cincinnati Reds mascot for Casey's Corner hot dog. So then this is uh, one of the pieces I got from Goodwill as well. It's like a little tree house. It goes for a Swiss family tree house. I have Spot as like a baby Tarzan since I don't have Tarzan Funko Pops. Archimedes and Hedwig and then a little Abu for Turk. We have the little Jungle Cruise. Skipper Mickey, Jasmine, and Aladdin for the Magic Carpet Ride. We have Tiki Room. And then we have Pirates of the Caribbean with Red, Will Turner, and uh, Hamilton Pop. And then I have about <laughs> 10 or so of these custom shelves. For Pirates of the Caribbean, I just asked them to do like a blue water splash background. I have the base as like a textured sand with some other like coins and gems in the background. This is the 4,000 piece glow in the dark treasure skeleton, Jack Sparrow, and and flock pirate dog and then I have a picture of Emily and I on the ride and a coin that she gave me for cast exclusive pirates people Then for this section, Brendan said I could actually take over and tell you about the Haunted Mansion ones because if you did not know, that is the attraction I currently work at. I work at the Haunted Mansion here at Walt Disney World. We just have a ghost and a doom buggy, the groundskeeper. Here's the organ player. Here's the original hat box ghost. We have Madam Mim. Huh? No, not Madam Mim. Oh my God. Oh God, I'm gonna get canceled. What's his name? Mary Menstrual. <laughs> Madam Mim. <laughs> Little ghosty. This we actually got at the Pop Yourself. We got this in the pop yourself. We both uh, made little pop ourselves for Halloween and we got this little ghost because it went with the mansion. We have the guy on the barrel. Is this Victor guys? Yeah. This guy, I can't remember his name, but he's from the stretching room, obviously. Then we have Mickey in a doom buggy. I got those at Pin Traders. Like when they first came out, I got myself one and Brendan one. Then in the case, we just have Constance. Another one of this dude. This guy was the chaser. This is just the regular. We have the maid. Okay, Amy. The opera singer Constance Hatchaway as her ghost. The mummy and then the hitchhiking ghosties. Then we have a hint. Oh, 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 oh. And we have a haunted mansion <laughs> shelf. Uh, I have the little uh, Diablo. He used to be a keychain uh, with Maleficent. I have him in there as the crow-like raven. We have the Disneyland version of Haunted Mansion and the butler. And then this is just another custom shelf that this little ghost glows in the dark as well entering Fantasyland and I have uh, most of the Small World Pops. I think this is like Norway, USA, Kenya I believe, the UK, and uh, Japan. I'm gonna tell everybody how you accidentally bid on $100 worth of Small World pins the other day in a whatnot yeah, auction. I'm not, I'm not used to whatnot. <laughs> Gratefully it didn't go through. I bid too low somehow. It was $111 on a musical <laughs> pin lot and that would not have been fun. We have Cinderella. I just have her there because of all like the food workers and the different restaurants that they have in Fantasyland. And then and I have Arthur, Sword in the Stone, since people like trying to pull out the sword uh, behind the carousel. I have the Fairy Godmother, Cinderella, for Bippy Bop Boutique, to Peter Pan. I have the two ride boats. These actually go for really cheap usually, and I think that they're good pops with the detail that they have on them. Captain Hook, this is a box lunch Tinkerbell. It goes for cheap as well, usually. This is a Smee. He was part of the Disney like collectors type thing that they did before, and then we got Peter Pan. I got this carousel from Goodwill for about like eight or nine dollars, and I thought it that it would go well with the mini carousel pop that came out, which I think is a really good pop. And then with Splash Mountain having closed, I have the free Splash Mountain pops. And then transitioning into Tiana's Bayou Adventure, I have many Princess and the Frogs pops. And then this is actually a Barbie pop. I don't remember the character's name, do you? Peaches? Bruh. In Barbie? Is that not Peaches and Cream Barbie? Yeah, but what's the Princess uh... and the Frog name? It's her best friend. I thought the character's outfit and look fit. And then I have some Pinocchio Village House Pops. Uh, I actually have one of the Pop in a Box with the Jiminy on it, but I cut the Jiminy off of this one because I thought that he should have one just with his nose growing. And then Figaro and Geppetto and Blue Fairy. So then we have the Mad Tea Party Teacup. We have Alice. This one was a Disney Parks exclusive. Queen of Hearts. This was a Target exclusive. And then the Mad Hatter was a Target exclusive as well. The Blacklight versions are Funko exclusives. And then this Cheshire Cat with the half translucent body is an older Hot Topic exclusive. Coming down here, 
here, I actually got these uh, three custom uh, Cheshire cats. One with the Dalmatian, an alien, and a Solly. And I got Emily a custom Lotso Pop. And this person did these ones as well. I got each of these for $20. And then we have the rest of the Blacklight ones. And uh, I thought that this one fits well for the Cheshire cat tail. And then I have Journey on the Sea with the Little Mermaid. I actually like this pop a lot. It's the Kiss the Girl. This was a Target exclusive pop. Uh, Ursula. And then this was a Box Lunch one with Ariel and Eric statue. We have Sebastian, another Ariel Deluxe one, the Ariel in the wedding dress, a regular Prince Eric. So then we have Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, which is probably one of my favorite rides in Magic Kingdom. I have six of the dwarfs here, and then Dopey, as you've seen before. This Snow White, I believe, was a Target exclusive. This one was regular. And then the Diamond Evil Queen, I think, was a Hot Topic. And then this older Evil Queen, I like that pop as well. For Filler Magic, I have the Diamond type Filler Magic outfit, Mickey, and then Donald, since he's kind of the one that takes over the show. Then for the next ride, I have Dumbo the Flying Elephant. I have Minnie on the inside, and there's also a Goofy one as well. And then I have the Hot Topic Dumbo Diamond Dumbo live action. And then one part I forgot to mention, I got Mr. Bobinski from Coraline as kind of like a ringmaster, because I thought that he would fit the look pretty well of the circus tent. And I, I think his name is like Black McDuck, and he was the closest one I could see for a pilot uh, pop for Barnstormer, so I have him for that. And then Winnie the Pooh Pops are one of my favorite pops and so I have quite a few for many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. This is the original Pooh Bear. This is probably my favorite new design Pooh. I believe this one was a Hot Topic that they came out with a diamond design recently. This Pooh, which I have a diamond design. And then Sleeping Pooh, which I believe was Box Lunge. Piglet, Roo. I have Bumper here for Rabbit because they don't have a Rabbit pop yet. I have a Heffalump. I have every version of the Heffalump. A uh, Diamond Eeyore, the Woozle, and the SDCC 2017 or 2019 Flock Tigger. And then I got this little piece from Goodwill as well. I'm gonna turn it into like a ticket station for the entrance of Magic Kingdom. I have Walt and his train station, a couple different stages of Mickey in the back, and then these three sort of silver pops that like showcase the major scenes that Mickey was in. So, down here, we have a fire station thing I got from Goodwill as well, since Walt was a fan of fire stations, and that there's one in Magic Kingdom. I have Fire Jack-Jack. I believe this was a Target exclusive. I have Firehouse Dumbo, Fire Donald. I think that that was a convention exclusive one. And then Pongo and Perdita, which were Pop in a Box exclusive. <laughs> And then the next area that we enter is Tomorrowland. I have the People Mover and all four of these pieces connect together. I have the Glow in the Dark Buzz, Alien Remix Buzz, Alien Remix Zerg. I have Turbo for Tomorrowland Speedway. I have Roz here. This is another piece that I got from a Goodwill. The CDA, the Child Detection Agency. I have Boo getting taken away and Solly being scared about it. George Sanderson, 2319. And I have another Mike Wazowski down here. I have a custom Buzz Lightyear Mickey that I made. These little uh, glass things. I got from Dollar General. They're like a dollar each. I have Stitch for Alien Encounter Ride, Tron, both of these glow in the dark. I have Gizmo Duck and Claptrap from Borderlands. I kind of have them as servers for Sunny Eclipse. And then I have some Wally Pops because Wally's uh, not getting any love in any of the Disney parks. I think he used to have a video game in Epcot that people could play, but he needs some sort of attraction. I have a little bit more of a display for Buzz Lightyear Face Ranger Spin because that is the first ride that Emily and I met and did together. I have Rex playing the video game. Uh, that he played in, I believe, the second movie. Buzz, the newer Zerg. I have the more expensive Zerg, the Disney Store exclusive, and then I have the OG Alien. And I got this uh, little claw machine that Emily and I play sometimes, since we are a big fan of the duck claw machine and temporary. And I got that for about 5 or $10 on Facebook Marketplace. Then I have this Space Mountain shelf. I've had this pop at least three times, and I thought about making a custom glow-in-the-dark of the text, as well as the lights here. And then this Monsters, Inc. shelf is probably one of my favorite shelves. I believe it's the first custom one that I had done. There's a lot of cute little details in there that you might be able to see close up with the camera, but this is for Monsters Inc. last one. Hi there. Welcome back. I have Big Thunder Mountain shelf as well. I got the train from Goodwill and then the goats are lucky from Despicable Me. And then over here you can see my favorite pop as I mentioned before, the Splash Mountain ride and this awesome background that it's done. But you'll get to see that in a little bit more detail. <laughs> Oh, 
now we're transitioning to Hollywood Studios and the icon that I have for that park is the Tower of Terror and it comes with a golden bellhop Mickey. I don't have many Muppets Pops but I do have Superhero Kermit and then we have started to collect the Muppets Christmas Carol Pops and then I'll probably get some others but if you're a Muppets collector you know that a lot of those Pops are a bit more expensive and so I don't have too many of those for the Muppets. I have the two Aerosmith Pops that they've made for a rock and roller coaster. Who are they? I think like Joe Perry and Steven Tyler. <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> <laughs> Joe, <laughs> Joe, Mama, Angie, Daddy. <laughs> and then the next part I think is the new like showcase piece of Hollywood Studios is Galaxy's Edge. And so I have a bunch of like first order type pops. I have the ATAT -AT shooter for the Rise of Resistance portion of the ride. This is like the type of outfits that a lot of cast members will uh, be wearing in that area. I have a stormtrooper since they're patrolling a lot. And then I have a lot of the Jedis for the Jedi Academy where you can get your lightsaber made. Most of these ones down here will have their lightsaber with them. I have Kylo Ren, Poe, Finn I believe his name is, and like BB-8 and Rey for the area. And then a couple other droids since there's a bunch of droids going up around the area. And then we have Toy Story Land. One of the main rides there is Slinky Dog Dash. Emily got me this little like Slinky Dog piece to go with my display from Cast Connection around like $10 or so. I have Slinky, I have Wheezy since he's the singing at the end of the ride. We have Rex, we have Ducky, we have <laughs> Bunny. Excuse me, skip somebody. Someone behind Ducky. Pink Bear. We have the villain of Toy Story 3. Uh, we have Bunny. We have Alien. We have Jesse. He's misunderstood and deserves a redemption arc. We have Bullseye. We have Han. We have... Say his name. Say his name. Lotso. Lotso Huggin Bear. Uh-huh. We have Bo Peep. We have the Target version of Mr. Potato Head because some pink bear in Toy Story 3 <gasps> put him in the sandbox and did that. Uh -huh. uh, we have another Bo Peep and we have uh, Gabby. Gabby Gabby. Gabby Gabby. Then the next part we have the Incredibles who do a lot of photo opportunities in Hollywood Studios. I have a Edna ornament since I got rid of baby Edna mode. I didn't think that was a very good pop and the regular Edna mode is quite expensive. Then we have a couple Fantasmic Pops, Sorcerer Mickey, I believe this is a Funko exclusive Diamond Sorcerer Mickey, and then this is the Chase version of Maleficent with planes that glows in the dark. We have a few more Star Wars pieces then, DJ Rex, this is Luke, uh, Mando, and Grogu, along with Jar Jar Binks. This Luke outfit goes more of the Star Tours vibe, that's why it's kind of separate from Galaxy's Edge. Then I have a lot of the Beauty and the Beast sing-along pops. I believe, but Emily thinks that I'm wrong, that you used to be able to meet Baymax in Hollywood Studios, but if I'm wrong about that, then he's just here because he's here. Uh, we have Ariel, the sing-along attraction that's there, but I believe that they're getting a new attraction soon for that. Frozone's out of place, and then a couple more Star Wars characters. Alexa, could you ever meet Baymax at Hollywood Studios? Baymax is a character from the movie Big Hero 6, who first appeared in 2014. According to the provided context, Baymax is available to you at Hollywood Studios only until 2014. Oh my god! <laughs> I'll need to look for a photo. <laughs> Roll the tape. <laughs> I just ain't buying that. I just ain't buying it. <laughs> and I have Gus Gus taking control of the carousel. Kind of like a red carpet sort of vibe for him. A few more Star Wars lingering characters. These go kind of with the Star Tours vibes. We have a Rey, a young Han, Glow in the Dark, Mando, just a regular droid. And I have a few Marvel Pops, just because I think that Hollywood Studios should give like a nod to Marvel, kind of how Disneyland does. I have Popcorn Bucket and Soda for Hollywood Studios as well. We have Frozen Sing Along, Max, and Powerline because you can meet Max as Powerline. Vasilier is just here because he's here. Another Frozen sing-along and more Star Wars and Frozen sing-along. Come with me and let's take the Skyliner from Hollywood to Epcot. He says he's coming. Come on. Come on, Spike, we're going to Hollywood. No, actually we're going to Epcot. We're going to Epcot. Come on, I'll help you. Look at me, my boy. Oh! <laughs> You're so cute, Spike. Yes, you're so cutie. We're gonna start off with Norway. We have a bunch of Frozen characters. Anna, Dome Guy from the second one. Kristoff, I said Anna for that, didn't I? Mm-hmm. Elsa, Kristoff, Anna. We have a guy from Game of Thrones, Ned Stark. I thought he just fit the vibe, kind of display-wise. And Olaf. I got this little house type pop-up thing from Goodwill as well. I have a troll from Box Trolls and another one, kind of like a Skyrim one. We have like a nod to, what was it, Maelstrom? Yeah, the ride before 
uh, Frozen. So after Norway, I have some pops for China. I have two pops non-Disney. I have uh, Poe and Tigress from Kung Fu Panda, Shang and Mulan, and then going into Italy. There's not many pops that I thought fit Italy well, so I have Machiavelli and the girl from Luca. We have Mexico. I have a bunch of Coco pops for that. Dante, Coco, this is the Toys R Us one that glows. Hector, that was a convention exclusive one. A couple more China pops. These are like Asia exclusives, I believe. Mushu diamond version. Quasi Moto for France, Alice with flowers for the UK, and then Eagly from Peacekeeper for the US. And then continuing with the World Showcase, we have some of the pop around the world, I believe they're called. We have Mexico with another Miguel pop. We have Norway with the snow monster. Germany with a- Mr. Prickle Pants. Mr. Prickle Pants from Toy Story. UK, I think it's like Barkingham. I have like passports, some other little nods and pieces that are meaningful to me. Japan, Sushi Step from Monsters, Inc. Canada, Ireland. Ireland. I started collecting pins recently. I have a piece of history Epcot pin. Around here I also have some of the like pamphlets to the different festivals that Epcot has. I have two pops regarding Grill. I have Chip and Dale since they meet there. They kind of are the Kingdom Hearts ones but they have like little apron type things so I thought that they work well there. And then we have the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind display. Bunch of Groot, Star-Lord, Nebula, Rockets, Mantis, and Drax. Then over here, I have some Mission to Space pops. Continuing into Spaceship Earth, I have a couple pops to represent the cavemen, then the Egyptians, Rome, the Renaissance period, the modernization of art, and entering like the early US household of black and white, and then over here with May from Turning Red, the more modern 2000 era. Above it, we have Journey of Water with Moana, Club Cool, and Chef Figment for all the different festivals like food and wine and Festival of the Arts and such. Then finishing Epcot, we have a Figment hat from this most recent uh, Festival of the Arts, and the Figment popcorn bucket for the Imagination Pavilion, since they haven't really done a spaceship or Funko Pop yet, but I hope they will. You can see Emily and I wearing this figment hat in our video coming this week. Maybe asking yourself, Festival of the Arts, did that happen months ago? Yes, it did, but it's still worth watching. Then another pop that Emily and I want to work on, we want to work on doing some custom pops. We have this Eternals pop that we want to turn into villain or antagonist for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, so we're going to try to do him up to look like the one from that. And last but not least, with our final part, we're going to be covering Animal Kingdom. Start off with Pandora and Avatar. We have some of the wishables that I just recently got from a Goodwill trip. We have Jake Sully, Natiri, then some other ones like Blacklight, Glow in the Dark, uh... Tamatoa <laughs> and uh, two glow in the dark black pamper pile because I think like the vibe of Pandora at night is sitting with these colors. We have Kronk and Cat Isma as a squeaker group, but with Russell and Doug, they're gonna be the like the wilderness explorers group for Animal Kingdom. We have the Yeti and the Abominable Snowman for Everest. We have a couple of these guys from I think they're from Tailspin, uh, serving as Cali River Rapids characters and Kilimanjaro Safari, and then a bunch of the other characters are just uh, Disney characters that have an animal feature with them. Continuing on, we have another princess with some little furry friends. We have some Lion King characters for the Lion King show. We have a chef, and Emily's favorite restaurant is Tusker House. Crocodile Dundee, what was his name again? Steve Irwin. Yeah, Steve Irwin. Cancelled. <laughs> We have Carl and Ellie in their phase of life where they were selling balloons. And then we have Dino Land USA. Dinosaur is probably one of Emily's favorite favorite <laughs> favorite attractions. And so I have a bunch of dinosaur pops. This is for the Dino Dig area. This was these two are Fortnite characters. Down here I have Stitch with Frog for Rainforest Cafe. More princesses, kind of with birds for the Oasis area since there's so many birds in that area. Shere Khan, Mowgli for Animal Kingdom vibe with the jungle trek that they have. Flame Tree Barbecue. I think this is another spastic plastic character that I got and I thought he fit the vibe really well for Flame Tree Barbecue since they sell barbecue. Oh, I have this little dino dig area as well that I think is a great display piece for the, the dig area. We have Raja and Mowgli with Ka and then some of the other around the world country pieces. This one's for India, Brazil, Iago. We have Australia and Spain. Then we have Nick Wilde and Judy Hopps since they fit the Animal Kingdom vibe. Tuck and Roll Alien Remix for it's tough to be a bug. It sure is. <laughs> uh, 
Azu, Simba, Pumba, Timon, Nala, Simba, Mufasa, Rafiki, then some live action ones. And then I have these little nice touch for the surgeries that they do in the back of Rafiki's Planet Watch. I have like a doctor and a fire rescue person from the Australia wildfires. And I got this display piece as well from Goodwill for about $5. And I thought it fit really well with uh, Indiana Jones. It kind of gives me uh, Crystal Skull vibes. And since Indiana Jones is at Hollywood Studios, but also probably coming to Animal, I thought it fits here as well. And here are some of the other custom shelves I have. I have the Chase King of Hearts version of Donald and Goofy for Tron. This all glows in the dark as well. I have a Halloween display, a summer shelf display. I have Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. I have Stitch with Ducks. I have another Haunted Mansion individual one, and I have a Sunset Boulevard with R2 and the, the tram. Then these are just some filler pops that didn't belong or I ran out of space. We got a lot of the Hercules ones, some Sleeping Beauty. He kind of goes with Epcot since he's at the animated part there. Figment, Madame Mim, Emperor's New Groove, Emily and I like a lot. Bill Nye used to have a space at Epcot and I thought that these fit well together. We have Nemo and Friends and so I have them kind of in these little Funko display cases almost acting as fish tanks. Star, this one was Hot Topic exclusive. Olivia, Great Mouse Detective, Brad again. Then we have some other pop pieces that didn't really fit. <laughs> on a baseball bat display. Peter Bar Jelly, Peter Bar Jelly, Peter Bar Jelly on a baseball bat. <laughs> We've been at this for quite some time. <laughs> Uh, we got this avatar piece I found from Goodwill. Tree of Life I got from Goodwill as well. The three different Matterhorn, three different versions of that. This Jurassic Park one I thought went well with the dinosaur riding right Animal Kingdom. Emily got me this Rex uh, like three tier plush at Cast Connection. Baymax, this Rapunzel book I got. Two Flock Marie's Mandalorian on I forget what this character is called. Beauty and the Beast book. Captain Hook with TikTok Croc. King Triton from Little Mermaid. Kronk and Yzma stand. Flick is down there the Rapunzel Tower from Goodwill coming over here we have the Maleficent Dragon this fire glows in the dark so did the eyes and nose this is a custom piece that's probably one of my favorite pops Fantasia Sorcerer and Mickey for Fantasmic we got this little scrum playing in the sandcastle a wish light up I got from Goodwill a Mexico piece for when they do a free caballeros and then just some other uh, pops here and there as well as an orange bird display <laughs> right to Ratatouille Adventure I got a couple of these pieces from Goodwill such as this one and the one beneath it. Pretty much have every Ratatouille character other than blocked Remy, I believe. Over here we have uh, Woody's Roundup Rodeo. We have Bo Peep's Sheep on top of some like little toy letter blocks. I got this piece at Goodwill as well. I mean, it goes very well with the Toy Story Mania ride. And then I got these little lights from Goodwill to go with these building blocks that we made. We made a little uh, display for Toy Story. <laughs> monorail display piece as well. I got this to go with all the parks in transition. Behind this we have a puzzle that Emily and I did together and some other fake coral pieces that I got from Goodwill. I got this for $20 or $25 off Facebook Marketplace. I thrifted these uh, Winnie the Pooh pieces. I have like a little rink. I got rain poo on. I got another Eeyore here. Emily got me this honey pot. And then in the back I have like a 100 acre woods poster that was thrifted. I changed my car display so right now I just have Cruella driving the piston cup. I got this at Goodwill well as well for about five dollars. I think this is a really good display piece. What do you think, baby? for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bored. Y'all just been up here talking to your toys for two hours. <laughs> two hours? That is terrible. I had no attention, huh? <laughs> these Harry Potter ones I got uh, on a road trip of Emily to Jacksonville, Florida. We got them for about $2 each, maybe a little bit less. We have Mulan and Merida, the new ones. And then down here are a lot of bigger pops that wouldn't really fit on a baseball bat case, but a lot of them are movie moment Disney ones and other pieces that I found from such like Goodwill. In my closet, we have an overflow of Funko Pops that I don't really have the room for display. We keep Christmas and Halloween ones in here as well, and we'll have a video out on those displays sometime this year. And there you have it. Like, comment, subscribe. No! <laughs> what? You're just supposed to say, and that's my Funko Pop collection. Like, comment. No! <laughs>
Girl, hey, dog pets can be. Yeah, I should just As have you my can see, <laughs> or something. We spent quite a long time filming this video, but we're finally done. Um, where's the mic? Thank you for watching as we showcase another subscriber's Funko Pop collection on the channel. How did you feel being the first subscriber full collection um, being displayed instead of judged on the Nelmsy channel? Exhausted. Would you do it again? I guess. Huh? Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, if you did, you can leave it a like or give us a comment. I hope you guys are excited for more Funko videos. Brendan is the Funko Vulture. He's always getting the good deals on the Funko Pops. So if you guys want more Funko videos, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Also, thank you to everybody who liked our last video about Disney pin trading. That video is probably doing the best any video has done on my channel aside from my very first Funko Pop video. So thank you all for the love on that video. And we'll see you all super soon in another video. Bye, Bye. guys. You did not tell me you needed to dust these things. <laughs> that is a lie. That's a lie. That rice bike. Sing it to the mic. Spikes just want to have what? Treats. Treats, huh? You gotta get like. How does he do it? It's like. <coughs> you gotta do it with me. I don't have it. The other guy's like. <laughs> That's the only one I know. What this? <laughs> Do you know any other ones? No, I don't they know any of them. It's just like a little, uh, little cloud of dirt going around, so you know, do a pink. <laughs> do a circle. <laughs> Is it back to the original? No, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Is this recording? Yes. Delete all of them. <laughs>